Hey, you. Yeah, you. Hey, it's okay. I just have a secret to tell you. God of War 2018 is one of the best video games to have ever been created. Well, I guess that's not really a huge secret. IGN did a poll in September 2021 with over 26,604,825 votes, and God of War 2018 was voted as best game of all time. But you know what makes a potentially best game of all time better? The answer is... Frames. I'm talking FPS. Frames per shooter. Frames per second. Playing something in 30 frames per second makes my eyes bleed. My eyes know something is missing, and they try to make up the difference by focusing extra hard. Then I pop blood vessels in my eyes, and my eyes bleed. I can't do it. Some might say, but you only care about frames if you're a PC nerd. If you're running a 60 hertz display, but your graphics card is pumping out 300 frames per second in CSGO and your frame rate capped, was that me? To which I would counter, you only care about frames if you have eyeballs capable of perceiving motion. God of War on PS4 was locked at 30 frames per second, sometimes dipping lower than that. Even on PS4 Pro, if you were on high resolution mode, it would dip below 30 frames per second. Wow! Now what does that look like if it's played on a PS5 with 4K resolution locked at 60 frames per second? 60 frames per second? Yes! Just take it in for a second. All those frames per second. It makes a difference. Turns out human eyeballs can discern motion. So when there is more clarity of motion, human eyeballs see the motion better. That's just the facts of frames. I love me some frames. And I feel that frames are more important than 4K resolution in 100% of all scenarios. But let's get real for a second. Frames per second is like money. It has diminishing returns on your happiness. When you don't have enough, your happiness can be severely affected. Increasing how much you have will increase your happiness up to a certain point. After enough of it, you stop feeling anything when you get more. You get to the point where you want more just because it's a higher number, not because it will make you feel anything. 60 is a great number of frames. Let's not get greedy. Though my friend Steve says that his eyes bleed unless he has 120. So I understand it's a slippery slope. Point is, there's a big difference between 30 frames and 60 frames. So when I heard that God of War was getting boosted to have more frames on PlayStation 5, it was meaningless because... I don't have a PS5. But my roommate got a PS5 recently. Oh yeah. Oh man, but now that it's out on PC, it doesn't even matter. Oh, the frames per second is unlimited. On PC, you can have unlimited frames per second. Why am I geeking out about 60? I just want more frames. Give me the frames. I want all the frames. Keep your wits about you, boy. You're right. You, you're right. 60 is great. 60 is a great number of frames. This game is stunningly beautiful. The art... With power comes a big choice, lad. You can either serve yourself or put your godhood in the service of others. The setting... The animation. You're telling me, kid. Whoa. At 60 frames per second, compliments and highlights all these things. I especially love animation, like a whole lot. And so 60 frames per second is huge. It's undeniably amazing to look at. God of War is a masterpiece, and playing it at 60 FPS, it's game of the year. 
Game of the Year 2022 goes to 2018's God of War played on PlayStation 5. And now that it's out on PC, forget about it. PC is the best way to play God of War if you have $3,000 lying around. <laughs> or you could pay $400 for a PlayStation 5. Hot take. God of War is the best game of all time in its genre. That IGN poll really showed how decidedly unhot of a take that is. Does that uh, make it a cold take? <laughs> it's one of my top five favorite games of all time. And that was supplanting some of my favorite childhood games. Adulkin! That's not an easy feat to do. To break into someone's top five. I mean, I'm literally playing Chrono Trigger music right now. Nostalgia makes everything feel like a masterpiece. So for a new game to even have a shot and getting into your top five, it has to excel beyond your current comprehension of a game's capabilities. Which God of War did over and over and over, uh, constantly surprising me and exploding my expectations. What is my niche? Where do I fit into the video game landscape? I love games with great stories and characters. I love atmosphere. I love dynamic, nuanced, difficult action where your creativity melds with your reactions and the tools you have to solve the problems presented are both useful and necessary. I like when the game looking stylish is a function of my ability to play it well. Wait, I can ride a rocket and do kickflips and ollies as a damaging ability? I might need to change my top five list. Devil May Cry, the Doom reboots. The Arkham series. Gunstar Heroes. God of War does all these things. It does all of these things nearly perfectly.
Well, if you like Devil May Cry, what did you think about the original God of War series? I hated it. Did not want to spend a single second of time living in that world. But uh, that action is nuanced and dynamic and uh, difficult and melds. Yeah, I get that it is. But there's one huge glaring problem for me personally about that entire series. It's this guy right here. Uh-huh. Yep, my problem with the original God of War series is in fact the God of War. He's an irredeemable rage machine masquerading as a character. There's no nuance to him. Yeah, like there's no like intelligent conversation. Like, they just like rip your head off. Like how do you feel deeper? Uh, you just rip your head off. Like there's there's one dimension to this character. If the original Kratos character was a musical composition. The writer's idea of variation would be to play the same chords louder in the sequel. Then even louder in the subsequent sequel. He's an angry boy, and he does angry boy things, increasing in depravity and angriness with each game. I can't say that gore bothers me in video games because I love Doom. But in my opinion, the colossal difference between something like Doom and how God of War used to be is Doom has violence and gore against demons, with your character trying to save humanity, and God of War was depictions of violence and cruelty against people, and a lot of them innocent. No, please, no! With your character just wanting death and murder to satiate his appetites. Thank the gods you came back for me! didn't come back for you. No! I didn't want to play that for a single second. Kratos was, how you say, a crappy guy. Mm -hmm. And that crappy guy's story was not a story that I wanted to experience. Mm -hmm. So when I saw the trailer for the God of War reboot, I was thinking, Oh boy, here comes more of that crappy guy. Wait. It is simply a target. Clear your mind. That is the most tender thing I've ever seen. I'm in. Now, you are ready. I'm all in. The interesting thing is that Cory Barlog, the guy who directed and wrote the story for God of War 2, which is like this. No! Please, no! Is the same man who directed and wrote the story for God of War 2018, which is like this. We did a good thing. I'm glad we came back here. That thief did not deserve the peace you gave him. Maybe so. Still, it feels good to help people. Even the dead ones. Hmm. So much like your mother. This seems like a different person expressing these two stories. What happened to this man? Trying to figure out what we wanted to do. I know that what we wanted to do was not going to just be make another God of War game. Knowing that, we knew that the same old Kratos, rage-filled, crazy guy, was not going to work. And I kind of started thinking about this idea that if Kratos ever got a second chance, you know, this idea of like when I had a kid, I felt like my perspective on everything changed. The intro to the game sets the tone and themes perfectly. The setup is that the boy's mother is dead, and her dying wish is to have her ashes spread at the highest peak in all the realms. Shortly into the game, Kratos, in a quiet moment alone, expresses his vulnerability, his fear, his insecurity. Faye, what do I do? Our son is not ready to carry your ashes to the top of the mountain. <sighs> Without you. Being a father again is the only thing, the only thing in the universe that could get him to feel this way. Then you're teased with, maybe he's still bad. Oh, he kind of is still bad. What are you doing? Now his guard is up. But he's also good. I 
got it. Yes! Well, do not lose it. He's just bad at being dad. I wish mom was here to see it. Ah, I understand the story, and I'm ready to get behind it. Yep, uh, Kratos was a crappy guy. I killed many who were deserving. And many who were not. In God of War 2018, he moved to a colder climate, and apparently dunking his head in snow cooled his temper a bit. Boy? In this game, Kratos is self-aware of his crappiness. It's just funny to think of her teaching you something. Yes. And is actively making efforts to not be such a crap bag. What is his impetus for change, though? And you must be better than me. Understand? Say it. You will be better. Must never forget that. Good then. Come. Don't get me wrong, he's got a long way to go, but now instead of evil, he's just grumpy. You left me to fight alone. I did. People are one thing, everything else you fight. Until I say stop or we are dead. Understand? Pull your weight or we go home. So help me, boy, I will turn this magical journey car around. Dad of War. Jokes aside, I love that it's Dad of War. That's what attracted me to the game. That's what hooked me. That's what kept me going. I think being a dad is maybe the highest calling in life, only matched by being a mom. And, uh, you know, I mean, the sequel could be Mom of War. That'd be a great game. Regardless, having a son being an impetus for change rings true. That's a pretty powerful reason to be a less crappy guy. Father and boy are on a quest. The quest giver happens to be dead. It's his wife. Look, all this time, there's been a protection stave around our entire woods. But the stave's broken there. Did you cut those down? She had marked the tree she wished used for her pyre. Why'd she do that? This is cool. This is way cool. I love this. It's the classic hero's journey. This classic story setup works or doesn't according to the character moments. And God of War has some unparalleled character moments. Why did you do that? I saved you! You were trapped in there! I waited and I waited, but you wouldn't come out! So I pulled you out! Boy! I was gone only... Moments. No! You've been gone a long, <coughs> long time! I didn't know what to do! You left me here! Again! Why don't you care? I... That's impossible. The relationship with his son is excellent. I mean, it's it's bad. It's a, it's a rough relationship. What I mean is, it's presented excellently. It's believable and progresses naturally. Not like you would even care if she was. Mind your tongue, boy! Until our journey is over, one of us must remain focused. Do not mistake my silence for lack of grief. Mourn how you wish. Leave me to my own. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. No. Why would you? You do not know my ways. I know 
it has not been easy. In the light, I felt only moments pass. If that is of some comfort to you. That's good to know. Really. And Father sees the journey as a means to teach boy critical life skills. Power. This weapon, any weapon, comes from here. But only when tempered by this. By the discipline, the self-control of the one who wields it. That is where the true strength of a warrior lies. Maybe we should look for those bones. Why? Didn't you hear him? We can talk to Mom again. If we keep an eye out Look if we... you wish, boy. I will not be distracted by this fool's errand. This spirit lies to you, boy. How would you know? I have known many spirits. They are all liars. This one is different. I know it. You know very little. Govig's bones. What will you say to her? To Govig? Your mother. What have you left unsaid? I... I guess... I just want to know if she's okay. She is dead, boy. I know that. I... You don't understand. Neither do you. I tell her that we're both okay. Not to worry about us. Atreus, I... I miss her too. You know this. I thought I knew very little. The final bone. Yeah. We might as well return them to the spirit. Maybe he will keep his word. I know and... she's not coming back, okay? I know. I just... Never mind. I just gotta return the bones. It's just... She says she'll honor our request. Eldy Fagna. And reunite us? In Okay. You are. All right. Say it. I told you so. I told you so. You are naive, foolish boy. This is true as well. But do not take your disappointment out on me, boy. Take it as a lesson. Yes, sir. At this point, if you've been doing quests for other spirits, this feels like a genuine moment. Now fast forward a little bit in the story. Boy gets sick. Father starts losing his mind with grief. Will you help me? Of course. Oh yeah, side note, this is Freya. She's uh, Odin's estranged wife. Has been exiled. And is uh, helping, uh, you know, help Kratos and Boy on their journey. Dad is losing his mind with grief, but to save Boy, he returns to confront a past he had forsaken. Fires cannot burn there, and no magic in all the Nine Realms can create a blaze. As for the dead, your frost axe will be useless. You'll need to find something else. Then I must return home. Dig up a past I swore would stay buried. Who you were before doesn't matter. This boy is not your past, he is your son. And he needs his father. Kratos has spent the whole game teaching Atreus important survival skills, but otherwise being non-communicative and disengaged. Boy, what do those runes say? Look, boy! Look here, another. Boy, over here. What does it say? Encounter men, you will stay out of it. Understand? But I can fight. You will stay out of it, boy. Speak no more of this. Then at Kratos' most vulnerable and humble moment, where he is open to his son teaching him. Go ahead. Actually, come look. Let me show you how to read this. That is not necessary. You've taught me so much. Let me teach you something. Andreas. Come on. You already speak it. Learning to read won't be that hard. I know how to read, boy. Just not this tongue. You're halfway there already, then. Okay. So the runes represent a lot of different things. In the middle of learning, of expressing his humility to his son. 
One of Thor's sons surprise attacks and as a result, Atreus falls ill. Now his only choice to be able to venture into Helheim is to retrieve the Blades of Chaos. The Blades are the key to unlocking his son's sickness, but they are also literal chains that he has to bind himself with to use. Symbols of his former self, his anger and hatred, his shame and grief. He confronts his own sorrow and sins, but not for his own sake. And this is critical, for the sake of his son. Original God of War, all Kratos ever does is want and take. Revenge, death, war, he wants it, he takes it. This new Kratos has something he's willing to give anything for, and he confronts his most hated truths about himself and takes pain and sorrow so that he can give life back to his son. Kratos goes to a place that only he has the power to go, and in the process goes back to a place he had vowed to never go again. This is one of the most emotionally invested moments in the history of video games. There's nowhere you can hide, Spartan. Put as much distance between you and the truth as you want. It changes nothing. Pretend to be everything you are not. Teacher. Husband. Father. But there is one unavoidable truth you will never escape. You cannot change. You will always be a monster. I know. But I am your monster no longer. All right, brother. Let's see what those blades can do. These are the symbols of his past, something he is desperate to be free of, but to save his son, he binds himself to his shame and sorrow once more. Good story arc, good character writing. Boy is going through his own change as well. He doesn't know how to talk to father and is a little scared of him. He finds his courage to stand up to him. Boy, read this. Boy, what's that say? The only time you want to talk to me is when you need to. Do you want to tell me something? I said, the only time you care to talk to me is when you need me to translate for you. And build some trust through communication. Some are men now. Like you? No. And you must be better than me. He finds out he's a god, and he gets all cocky and rebellious. When I came to these shores, I chose to live as a man. But the truth is... I was born a god, and so were you. Boy, have you nothing to say? Oh, he's got a lot to say. Whatever. It's all you ever talk about, over and over. Do something about it or shut up already. I see. Yeah, we're sick of hearing about little people's little problems. Um, all right. That hurt a little. Let's have a look at your gear then. No. Why not? We're almost there. You know I can handle it. Can you? After the way you spoke of her, I questioned that. What? That she wasn't a god? She was better than a god. And you shall not dishonor her. Fine. What a sassy little butthead. He even starts willy-nilly throwing out spells that have long cooldown. 
That was the worst timing for that. I Come on, kid. What the heck are you doing here? He keeps compounding his stupid actions and culminating with this final ultimate stupid action. <laughs> then, uh, you know, Balder takes your kid, jumps onto a dragon, you jump onto a dragon, you fall off of a dragon, and go skydiving without a parachute. You sneak attack Balder, you all get sent to Helheim in a crazy sequence. And then uh, the boy has a vision of seeing himself killing his own father. It was me. But we're gods. We can do whatever we want. Turn away, boy. <laughs> it wasn't me. I couldn't have done that. Do not dwell on those thoughts. Not here. He feels grief and shame about it. He finds himself at a crossroads, and he chooses to be good. We may argue. Me and Father. You and Freya. Brock and Sindri. But when we all work together, we do make a good team. And that's Tyr's test. That's why we're gonna make it to Odenheim. Do you hear that, brother? Lad's found his equilibrium. What's that mean? He means you speak wisely, Atreus, and that is good to hear. Father is proud and encouraging and finally open. I've come a long way, Atreus. This was no easy feat. You should feel pride. I do. Thank you, Father. There's also mom and son, blah, 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 blah. Their stories connect and are also excellent and are like a parallel to father and boy, but we don't have time for that. I'm basically incapable of making short videos. Let's talk about the setting and the atmosphere. Because uh, don't forget, we're, we're talking about how this is the best game uh, of all time in its genre. So yeah, we can't just talk about the story. The story is proven to be the greatest. Now let's talk about some of the other stuff. I don't know if there is a single second of God of War where I stop thinking, this game is beautiful to look at. Well, Niflheim is kind of stupid to look at, but also gorgeous. What a game this game is. The landscape designs, the intricacies of the locations, from these statues in Helheim to these tapestries on the walls in Tears Vault. The details, the designs, there is always something to catch your eye to keep you living in this world. The fortress of the dwarves, the tables and remnants of society that is gone, the broken down houses in the dilapidated towns. The Valkyries aren't sorting the dead, and so Draugr are all over the place. It feels like a world that is approaching Ragnarok, which is fairly frequently referenced. We did it! We beat every level of every test! I don't think even Ragnarok can stop us now. Look at this big old crow. How cool is that guy? Now let's talk about the animation. One of my favorite things to discover in games is custom context animations. Things like how in Doom 2016 you do a melee kill, it's context sensitive to where the player is standing in relation to the enemy. If you're behind them, in front of them, left, right, or above, each has a different animation in Doom 2016, which I just love. God of War has something similar. If you hold down R2, it does the Executioner's Cleave, which upon inflicting the finishing blow, does a context-sensitive animation. Are they standing? Or on the ground? Are you in front or behind? There are 14 different types of enemies you can kill with this finisher, and five of them can be ground finished. These are rough numbers. There might actually be more than this. But that's 33 different custom death animations. And they are all animated brilliantly. Some people might not ever even kill a single enemy with the Executioner's Cleave. But if you enjoy that move, 
there are 27 different custom death animations attached to it. Incredible! You want to make a move feel visceral? Give it a custom animation like this. This isn't even counting all the R3 button press finishers, which can be done on all of these enemies. Kratos looks awesome in motion. The enemies look awesome in motion, and the bosses look awesome in motion. The game, while being played, is animated pristinely. And the cutscenes? Just look at this dragon in this cutscene. This was some of the most eye-inspiring animation work I've ever seen in any medium. God of War's animation department is something special. The claustrophobic closeness as it thrashes at you in the elevator shaft. The eye-popping scale as you see it scratch at where Sindri is hiding. Then quite possibly my favorite transition shot I've ever seen in video games or film. The whole game is done in a one-take style. The only load screen cuts are when you teleport using the door, and that's an appropriate wideout effect for going through an arcane portal that barely even counts as a cut. So how do we get from this overlook to the boss arena without cutting? I can't even tell you how great I thought this was. This boss was the most impressive boss experience in all of video games for me. The context is fun. Reluctantly agreeing to save a person Kratos doesn't even like. What are you doing? We have to help him. Break right. Find an angle. Wait for my mark. Thank you. Oh, sure. I'll fight the skyscraper sized beast with my fists and an axe because I want my son to respect me. The transition to fighting the boss, the build-up, and the payoff. This is one of my favorite lines in the whole game. I have a plan. Be ready to lower the crane on my mark. I don't know how this thing works. I do not care. Be ready. Get the boss low, and when you're in the middle of your finishing animation, there's a hidden little music transition. Get ready, here come the violins! Here they are! Chills every time. Every time! I know this is a bit of a dire debate, but anyone who doesn't think video games could be art is simply a fool. Wow. Whoa, oh my gosh, how much time did I just spend talking about the presentation of the story? I have? Wow! Anyways, let's talk about the most important part of the game the combat. If you stack certain stats, you can attach additional attacks. Pretty cool! How do you thrill someone like me with a combat system? Nuance. Nuance is key. Some people were all, Doom Eternal is worse than the original. Its atmosphere isn't as good. Well, that is debatably true. You know what was better about it? The combat nuance. Grenades. Ice grenades. Flame belch. Dashes. Blood punch. All of it is useful and, dare I say, necessary to master to beat the game on its most difficult nightmare setting. God of War does this as well. Dodges. 
parries, axe throws, runics, combos, stun. You need it all. But I don't want to have to practice or learn. Then go play Mario Kart with some 10 year olds. Why am I making fun of 10 year olds? That's rude. 10 year olds are probably nice people. But if you want to have maximum thrill, well, the risk of imminent death matches the reward. When you just mash R1 and come away from an encounter victorious versus mastering all this and coming out victorious, who is going to be more maximally satisfied? I still have a good time, and I played the game on easy. Get out of here, Derek! Now, to be fully transparent, I think that God of War's early game on its hardest difficulty setting is exceedingly poorly optimized. Before you have even been able to level up a single ability or combo or runic attack, the game is killing you in two hits from the weakest enemies. And all the enemies are axe sponges, just receiving axe blows like they're a tender massage. This is the worst way to do difficulty in a game, just make your enemies bullet sponges. Terrible difficulty option. I knew that once I cleared the first couple hurdles of the game and got runic attacks and some more combo strength, I'd be having a good time. But getting to that good time was excruciating. F minus on those first few hours of playing on hardest difficulty. But once you get some of your abilities, it was an A plus. The threat of death makes every dodge and parry and movement feel invigorating because if you mess them up, it's all over. Once you have your abilities and combos unlocked, combat becomes a stage for expressing creativity. Kick some Draga into a dragon's breath. Check. Juggle enemies against and off surroundings to inflict extra stun. Check. Use a time slowing amulet to dodge at the perfect time and charge up a heavy hitting overhead cleave. Check. The system might be complicated, but I'll learn it. I don't want no handouts. I want to earn it. That's my philosophy on action in video games. If there's clarity in the path of progression, or the path If there's clarity in the path to progression, or the path to mastery, rather, that I don't feel cheated. I feel invigorated. But as soon as the path to mastery becomes unclear, then it starts to feel unfair. And the first couple hours of God of War on hardest difficulty feel terrible. But when things start to click, you're comboing axe throws into axe slams. You're freezing guys, burning guys, managing crowds with the blades and crushing single enemies with the axe. You use rage mode to get out of tight situations and heal, or you save it for particularly tough enemies. You stack runic abilities on runic abilities in a symphony of elemental destruction. The boy has summons. Birds to harry and create space. Wolves and doors to chase people and apply stun. Once an enemy hits its stun limit, you can just run up and destroy them regardless of their health. Shield and punching deal more stun. Axe deals more damage. Blades deal more AOE. On hardest difficulty, you have to use all possible tools at your disposal. Blocking and parrying. Quick dodge, dodge roll, run attacks, dodge attacks, runic attacks, stunning versus just damaging. You could play it like a third person shooter if you really wanted to. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about third person shooting mechanics. Uh, third person uh, works a little bit differently than first person. And one of the most unique marriages to gameplay and story you'll ever see is this little goof right here. Look at him. What a little goof. Atreus has his own button. You press square and it's the Atreus button. Here. Boy. Yes, sir. Square is the Atreus button. He's always with you running around in combat. 
And if you press square, he'll fire on the target you're currently looking at. He'll fire arrows and grapple enemies and run around doing fun acrobatics and melee attacks all on his own. But when you hit square, he'll fire his magic arrows at whatever you're looking at. You can even get him to fire magic arrows mid-cool acrobatic sequence. If you hold square, he'll do his equipped summon. He's vital to the experience. There isn't just a perception that he's helping in combat or the general idea that off screen he fights. He's fighting every second of the game that Kratos is fighting. I did okay. Yeah? I see improvement. He's on the journey, not as a passive character, but as a dramatically active participant. Every second of gameplay is furthering the father-son narrative. Thank you, God. Just look at this father-son bond. Like I said, I love games where the stylishness and beauty of the action is a function of how good you are at playing the game. God of War fires on all cylinders. Everything from its no-cut camera, to its touching writing, to its brutal combat experience. I typically think that epic is a stupid word, because its meaning has been diluted infinitely from its actual definition. But let me just say, God of War is epic. Okay, it still sounds stupid to me. It's, it's kind of a stupid word now. I'm sorry, Epic, you're stupid. No, not you, Epic Games. The word Epic. God of War is maybe a perfect video game. It's one of the only games in the history of video games that I would give a 10. I think 10s are bandied about too liberally. You gave Skyward Sword a 10? What are we even doing here? Metal Gear Solid 5 is not even a finished game. Both of these games are good, but neither of them are tens. Elden Ring is good game. Uh, probably ten. Ten out of ten game. Uh, anyways. But the most ten list of tens game of all games, meaning it excels in everything it attempts, is God of War 2018. What a game. What a game. What a game. Oh, whoa, what a game. Without me. I will not. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs>